Good morning, hi. Today, we are going to have Ruby Hammer on our Instagram Live talking about a little bit of beauty and skincare. So, thanks for joining. I don't know how it is where you are. I mean, it's super bright, but it's freezing outside. So, let's wait for her to get on. Pretty sure. Instagram Live. I've done a few of these now, and you'd think that I'd get better at this, but... Nope. She has not joined yet. Oh, there she is. Um, and there she's asked. So let me get her on. I think we're connecting now. Hi, how are you? I'm very well, Miriam. How are you? I'm super well. Uh, happy Monday morning. I don't know what week it is for you. I think it's like week six for me. I'm going a little nuts. <laughs> oh, I see. Where, where are you? I'm in London. How, how about you? I'm in London too. I haven't, I haven't left. Mm. This is where I've always been based. So th this is home. Home, yes. Yeah. Always better to be home. In times, of, uh, <laughs> times of anything but especially now yes thank you so much for joining us oh I'm, um, so grateful. I'm so grateful you asked and it's lovely i wish i'd met you <laughs> i got my little product here I'm very excited we're all worried about the post because you know you're wondering are things going to get to everyone but it's always nice to just have it in hand to play with it a little bit before of course and I'm, I'm loving, I mean, I, I started using your, so Ruby has this amazing little makeup line and, and, and I have to say, I love these. They're so yeah. beautiful. I call them my pots of joy. They, they do make you happy. They make you happy. And when you see the color and it says it, I think scientifically they say it, that those kind of bright neons, it just makes a message in your brain that it, it, it. The good day. <laughs> It gives you a little, even if it's fake, I'm glad it's real. It just uh, makes it nice. No, it really, it, made, it makes me happy having that in my bathroom. Like literally every time I see it now and I smile when I go in, it's, I, it, it, it so is very exciting. That's exactly what it is. And it has a practical function that you can put your other makeup brushes in. To be honest, it's a little object of beauty on its own. So you could have it tossed around, you could put your pens in it, you can put whatever you want. It's just... I like it for the bathroom. I, I really, I, mean, I love it. I was thinking you should have like a whole array of them, trays and everything, you know. Well, once we get going, let's see if I can do any other colors. But I've only just launched, you know, in September and two it's amazing in this madness, you know. So I've got into lovely stores. All those stores are now closed. <laughs> I know, I know. It's tough times for everybody. Exactly. So at the end of the day... It brings you a little bit of joy if it, if it has a practical function for you, superb, because you can put all your other things in from all your other brands. You can put your little, you can put your tool in it. Uh, yeah, this is true. But, you know, this is what I really love, too. So I'm always about everything that's little. Like, I really don't like big products, like, in general. So I, I don't like to carry big bags. I don't like big, you know, things to be big. But And I just love your packaging. And I, did you need, did you need, did you color it, um, you know, in this color because of your name? Yes. I've, anyone that knows me, and we've only just got acquainted, but I'm sure we're going to keep in touch and you're going to know that a little bit of red pops up. Like, look at the little mini. Behind. I know, I know. I saw, I saw behind. There are bits there. Like, I can see from the color of your packaging about pink and, you know. Uh, just yeah, I do. Like, I, pink is sort of my thing. Feel and that's my signature with a name like Ruby, it's a signature Ruby Red. And so, yes, you're right, I tweaked that. And exactly when, when the glass file came, it could have been all gorgeous, that neutral thing, but when it came in the red glass, it just it just looks better. And you find it in your bag or your kit quicker, don't you? I, I, I think so too. And I actually I just think it stands out a little bit and it just looks nicer. I don't know. The color just makes a difference. It really does. It could have been, you know, you have to pick the right color red, you know, and for me, it this has really depth in it. And, you know, it's not too orangey. It's not too pink. 
I like I love it. So that's the I've and, just, and, and for those of you who don't know, this is a nail file, but this is the nicest nail file. So when you feel it, like it actually doesn't look like a I don't know what they're called actually. The nail file and so it's from the Czech Republic it's not from China no disrespect to China but it is a proper really good it's super I mean it works really well like so I I'm very Thank picky you. with my nails you are a very fussy lady and for you to say that means a lot to me because it's small but it's functional it I use it on my husband I've sent it to my friends I've sent it to and especially now, so I always have my nails done. I can't see my manicurist. Exactly. So I've taken the color off, keep them short. But that thing works. So people always think, oh, is it just for travel? And I'm like, yes, no. exactly. I have to say it felt very substantial, despite the fact that, you know, it's like literally the size of my finger right here. But I yeah. really liked it quite a lot. It was really, I mean, I used it obviously this weekend and it was easy to clean. And I didn't think it was going to be as um, sharp. Like, you know, like, no. uh, as oh, finely as, it, as it was. <laughs> it's not harsh. Like, it won't damage your nail. It'll nicely smooth it off, tidy it. it. Look, when we ever get back to our desks, it's great to keep in your desk. It's great in your handbag. It's great to travel with. It's great for men. And, and just, so you know, I, I tend to pick. So if I find something on my hands and I pick it, I'm going to keep. Yes, Exactly. <laughs> It's like a self-harm, sorry. So with that now, it just means I smooth it quickly. Even though yes. not the nail, the skin, I can refine it gently. So but that's what I actually find that I'm doing right now is that I file my nails and I never really ever treated my cuticles or used oil before. But, you know, last night I was watching TV. I was putting cuticle oil in and, you know, pushing my... I, so it's actually quite nice to be able to do something... I, I never have time for stuff like that, and usually that's why I get the manicure, so somebody else takes care of it, but it's I'm nice to have this little compact, you know, you forget, yeah. you can do everything, we're, we're all capable, we're women, we have all these superpowers, so I think it's really, it's really great. Yeah. Um, I, I jumped the gun a little bit. So today I wanted to go through skincare and beauty care, um, okay. and get your expertise, because mine is not on that side. Um, I, I have prepped my skin per request. So today I woke up, uh, got my kids on homeschooling, which is always a lot of fun. And, um, and then now I have only, I use very, I, I, as I said, I'm, I'm very quick. I don't like to spend a lot of time doing anything in the morning. Well, you're, so, a busy, you're a busy lady and everyone is time poor. We've got more time now since. Yes. But if we get back to normal or even, you know, by choice or by force, while we're traveling to work or whatever, people don't have, you know, if you have children, if you have all sorts of things, pe people, not just women, everyone is busy. So you need to be as speedy as you can. And it's nice to have things. So I've always said, although I'm not the skin expert, you are, if you take the underpinning of good makeup, is good skincare, skin products, and looking after your well-being from inside. Nothing is going to, you're not going to be able to cover, well, you can, if you put a base on that thick, yes, we're all going to look great, but you're going to also look like you're in Madame Tussauds. <laughs> so skincare is the underpinning. When I'm, as a makeup artist, I prepare my model. You know, I spend as much time doing that prep as I do applying makeup and I think most people think oh it's just can be achieved with makeup no it the two go hand in hand and what I do is a temporary thing but when somebody comes to somebody like yourself it's about having a regime that is lifelong you know people say what is the best thing to have and I said the best thing to have is some regime in place whatever that is clean your skin properly exfoliate hydrate and then do the treatments as life goes on you know as we get older, Absolutely. eyes your wrinkles your this like for me it's pigmentation oh I'm, my, I'm starting to see my neck with all of these like instagram okay. lines that I'm doing. oh my god it's oh, wait, i can notice all these lines and then i turn a you have great skin through. thank you from you i it means a lot and but everyone then can what's the word like put the things that is their concerns and if there are things wrong 
don't be the doctor go to the expert find a dermatologist there are so many out there find a woman that you admire you know look at you Maria. you 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 have great skin i you're of a you're a younger woman than i am and but but look you look amazing so it's like find so an expert to go to and then start well, I think it's really important. So, like, my ethos in skincare and the reason behind MZ Skin is really to reveal, enhance, and protect the skin. So the idea is that in order to, like, the backbone to being able to do other things is to have as clear skin as you can. And in order to do that, you don't need a lot of complicated skincare products, but you need a few that work synergistically together. And so, as you said, cleansing is really important um, on all spa aspects. So if you don't cleanse and exfoliate, get rid of ex excess dead skin, debris, pollution, anything that's sitting on top of the skin, then anything you place on top isn't going to penetrate quite as well. So um, that's where I start off with like a really good cleanser um, that gently exfoliates. I think a lot of people do a lot of harm because more is not necessarily more. More can oh, irritate your skin. Absolutely. Over and stimulate, you know, week, oil production. Week, you know, but then they think, oh, if that's good, you know, like we all do it. We're human. Oh, if that's good once, I must do it every day yeah exactly but, but you have to you're like, you're like, it's just like <laughs> It's, it's like working out every day, you know, like if you look at serious athletes who train, they do arms one day, they do legs one day. I mean, like they don't, they don't do everything every day, you know, or they do one day of running and one day of, you know, swimming, you know, something different. And the face is the same thing, you know, like, and all of the skin. Obviously, I need to take better care of my neck skin. Oh my God. This is like driving me crazy. <laughs> First thing is if you have good posture, because that will already lift up your... This is true. This is true. Posture is very important. I'm trying to work on that myself. I really, I find that especially nowadays with all like the computer... Down? Are you sitting a lot when you are in... in Not in my office. So in my office, I'm usually like standing around the bed, but I'm usually quite stooped over somebody, whether it's a treatment, just evaluation, and then the rest of the time I am on my computer like writing my notes. So it, is, it does. But, you know, tech neck is a real thing, guys. Take care. Use everything you put on your face and continue down onto your neck and your décolletage. And don't forget these gorgeous hands too. So um, really important. So what first, as I said, is to reveal, and so um, then after is to enhance. So you put products on your face that you know are going to work and going to improve the skin texture, quality, thickness, uh, all of these types of things. So you know, don't you know the things that feel really nice sometimes aren't necessarily the ones that are best for your skin. So you know, like I love that silky uh, feeling of foundation, but if it has that silky feeling, it probably has silicone in it, which really doesn't have much impact for your skin, for instance. But so what I yes, yes. So I mean, it feels nice, so it like it it moves a little bit nicer on the skin, but it doesn't necessarily have the benefits from it. So what I like to do is to have a few good things, and I think most people can tolerate a good vitamin C, which is really great because it's an antioxidant. Um, so basically, antioxidants eat up free radicals that we create every single day. A lot of it is caused by UV damage. So it's basically, when you've used up the oxygen uh, uh, and you have these atoms floating around and these particles floating around called free radicals because they're not attached to anything. So antioxidants kind of go and like gobble them up and make sure that they don't do more damage to the body. And so antioxidants are really important. C is the one that is very known. Um, it's often found with vitamin E, vitamin B. These are really great products because they help antioxidize. So they fight those free radicals that Pre prematurely aged skin, break down collagen, and you know can contribute to pigmentation, uh, laxity of skin, and collagen loss. So you know, and co and the breakdown of collagen in general. So I think it's really important to have a vitamin C. Today I used, as I do every day, Brighton and Perfect. So that's a uh, ten percent encapsulated vitamin C. Mm -hmm. When you hear the word encapsulated, I think sometimes people don't know what that means. It just means that it's been created in a manner so that the vector, like the way that it's being delivered into the body, uh, is such that you have better penetration. So sometimes some of the skincare is good skincare, but it doesn't like get into the skin. Right. So when you can put it in a sort of like a um, envelope, so to say, you can get it through the skin a little bit better without having some of the side effects. So that's why I really like this one. And I like azelaic acid, which again is a skin lightener. I also think if you have a smooth palette to begin with, then you have less um, 
covering that you need to do. And it's not always possible. You know, people have rosacea, they have acne, um, they're like me, they have melasma, you know, so that's not always possible. But, but so, wow. So. Uh, well, you know, I'm sitting underneath the skylight right now. So I have like, uh, I chose the brightest place in the house because I, I, needed, <laughs> I needed a little extra help. But I do, I suffer from melasma on both sides of my face. And then all I've done is put tint and protect, which is coming out this week. I'm really excited to say. So this that, is that our tinted. Yeah. So this is launching just now. It's a tinted how moisturizer. Many shades? How many? Shades? Um, it's. Uh, excuse me. How many shades is that going to come in? Uh, uh, no, it's only one. It's a, oh, it's a translucent. Minutes. It's not meant to be universal. What it's meant to be is is more to have a sheen. It's not coverage. So okay. it looks like it has coverage, but it goes basically, it should work on your skin type. Anything okay. darker, probably not. Um, but it works for, uh, you know, skin types one to four, sometimes a low five, uh, you know, that type of thing. And it it's, has an SPF of 30. We're working on a second one, but, you know, we wanted to launch this one first. Actually, we're, we're looking at a, a, not a whole range, not like 50 shades, but we'll have like three different. This is the first of the three. Okay. Okay. And um, one very light and then one darker. So um, I like to mix things, and I think sometimes people do need to mix things together. So I, I chose this because it, it's, it creates a sheen on the face, but it also protects. It has UVA and UVB, both chemical and um, physical barrier. And even despite the fact that I use this, I still use Helio Care on top of it. So this is an SPF okay. 50. And you're so for instance... You're double protecting. You're double protecting. I'm always double protecting. protecting. Especially as you've just said, if you have melasma, you... Every... More is better. More is better of sunscreen, guys. That's exactly. the only thing that I can say is better. And this one I really like a lot because it's a gel, it's oil-free, and this one's beige and there's a taupe, and I actually have to mix the two of them together because this is too white for me and the other one's too dark for me, and I'm somewhere in between. And that's why that's why I decided not to go down the route of trying to create something for everybody because I think there's so many different nuances. And what I tell people is that if they feel that this is not the right shade for them, if they do have a little tiny drop of foundation, they can put a tiny drop of their foundation to create if they want more coverage. Because this is not really coverage. It's more like a glowing sheen. It gives you glowing skin, like a more translucent. But if you feel you need more coverage, then I would add like a little bit of um, foundation and stuff. And then that's all I've done. And uh, in, in preparation for you to help me out a little bit. <laughs> okay. Well, the thing, I'm, look at me, I am sitting in front Beautiful. of Beautiful. I'm meeting you, but I have only got, I haven't got foundation on my skin right now. I've just done my normal skincare. I cleansed, I did whatever, moisturizer. And then I've just used two, I think now as we get older or for everybody, one of the biggest tools you can have once you've done your skincare is a great, it could be a tinted moisturizer, it could be that product that you're just going to be bringing out, anything like that that gives the whole skin a bit of a vibrant glow. Then, if you are a foundation user, sure, go ahead and use that, but very light-handed. Yeah. For me, I just stick, I've just got two concealers. They're, these ones are from NARS. I have a paler one that I have, I'm a contact lens wearer, so I get a dark patch there and I get a little bit of there so i just kind of dot it on there 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 and i kind of look up and down to see if you're a little bit more puffy or darker shadowed or something i apply there with a brush or with my fingers so do you it. use a brush or do you use your fingers i i can use my what's the one i can use the brush for that sort of shape you know, okay, so I love this gadget. So this this so, is brilliant because it has so many different it's rubies yeah. uh, and it has so many different um, brushes. And I'd like to go through why you would use like it where has you would use different it. uses. So if you didn't want to touch and you wanted to be very delicate near your eye area, I would use this one, the the little crease brush. Okay, that's the first one. Yeah, which, whichever one, because they're in, yeah, that one, that one that you okay. have. So you can apply, let me see, I've used the paler colour on my eye, let's show you. I just kind of dot a tiny bit on the, on the outer corner, and then I use the smudgy brush to just push. Tap it in, pat it in, and then you can whisk it on. 
And how do you decide like lighter versus darker? I mean, do you uh, you, I, do you have why do you have two different shades of? Um, I think because I've got pigmentation, and maybe because I'm dark skinned, you you won't find a product that is one. Uh, so the same thing that I was saying. You're, I, you I, mix them together. I, I, I need a lighter one around my eye and my delicate area because I'm just trying to counterbalance that bit of dark shadow or whatever. And then a darker one, same consistency, and I just dot it on to where my little pigment points are and I have a little darkness. I don't know what that is, uh, Miriam. It's, um, it's like a B, it's like a dark... Is it, is it maybe because I'm having too much balsamic vinegar? Am I deprived? No, 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 no. Um, I can't see it very clearly, I mean, on this, but we but can I always take it, a look I at it. it. My, <laughs> my dark, that's why I can't see it. I was going to say it's not very noticeable. I need it. So, again, and that's all I've done. I've not got base on. I've not Amazing. got moisturizer, nothing. That's all I've done. And then once I've tapped it in, maybe with my finger because it's bigger here, I use a tiny bit of translucent powder or a tinted powder just in that zone. Just oh, here, just in here. Just, just set it so that it doesn't move. A whisk of it after my concealer, just a tiny bit, and I do a tiny bit there and there because you, you need And what to, brush do you use for that? I use either, uh, where am I going to look? A, a, some sort of a powder puff. Or a small wedge. This is this is what I usually use. <laughs> it's a bit too big that one. If you, unless <laughs> so, this is me. I love I love that. I use this. So I use this okay, Tom so Ford that's blusher like, all the time. I, I found, like a, um, what that's is it like called? your bronzer. It's a bronzer, but this is like all I do. I like literally. I have like no rhyme or reason. I, I that's because no one's ever taught me. Like so, how should I put that on? <laughs> Before you do that bronzer is when I would use a translucent powder, which it means colorless. Uh -huh. Tiny, tiny colorless. So that you I did order some so that we could do it. And I, 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 you know, I had translucent powder when we were in high, uh, like in quarantine right now. I went through all my drawers and I got rid of all the things I don't use. And that was one of the things I didn't know what I was used for. So I tossed it. You know what, though? If you haven't used it for many, many years, it's probably better to get rid of it. Yes. That. Yeah, so, that's true. You know who? Um, Laura Mercier does a wonderful translucent powder, and she doesn't do it in a huge, big size. You can get it in, like, a little... Oh. Head. Oh, that's you nice. Know, like, a bubble size. So why don't you get one little like that, and that will be more than enough for you. I, I go through it as a professional, using it every day on a shoe. Well, not since we've been in lockdown, but it... I'm glad you chucked the old one away. Get a fresh, small one. I did. I did order one. It just and you just hasn't come. control. You just strategically apply it, like to set the concealer, to set this bit there. And I do it. If you're going to do your brow with a brow powder, I like to just do it there and there because it just takes the shine away from when your face is right on there. This I don't do because it's aging and you need a little bit of a nice glow. So I just do it on the bits where you might think, and if you do it with a slightly smaller brush, you can control it, a slightly fluffier brush, you know, just. So if you don't do that, then you're more likely to sort of like have that shine, because that, I don't like that shiny, it's, like there's difference between glowing skin and shiny skin. That's, that's, that's it. And also, if somebody complains about their concealer or their base shifting mm. during the course of the day, yeah. you need to fix it in place so that you're not constantly touching it and putting your hands on your face. You know, once that's yeah. done, it'll be fine for the whole day. Then you get your big brush because <laughs> you've, you've prepared the bits that aren't going to move because otherwise you're going to get a stripy, streaky effect where some bits have been set and some bits haven't. Well, that's why I just don't end up using so much. I mean, I literally put a little bit of the blusher on and that's the, that's that, that, that bronzer. Because look how white I am. I'm almost translucent myself. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think I'm as white as my cup. I'm not that much different. No, 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 no. There is a difference. But then, then you whisk your Tom Ford product all the places where the sun would touch. So it would be on your forehead, just on your cheeks, uh, on your chin, you know, like big nut, exactly. Just the way, just show me how you naturally do it. So yeah. this is what I would do. And see, look, you can already see that I have a little bit more color on my face yes. than I did yes. like two <laughs> seconds ago. more alive. Yeah. 
you know do you ever do on the top of your head you know I do sometimes but you know I actually I have again like I'm in really good lighting but I have melasma a little bit here and here and so it automatically gives me a little bit of darkness there so I don't always uh, but I've, I've been treating it quite well right now so now but. that you've done that that's that's super that's wonderful then the next big frame I come to is one's eyebrows you know like yes. I, I you've got amazing eyebrows i used to have mine have gone a little bit thinner as i've aged but no now, you have great eyebrows i brush them up first with like a spoolie and then i use the angle brush now the thing about these brushes is you can use them this one yes the angle the slanty one great ah. you can use that to do your brows you can also use it to do your liner so i pick if you're a pencil user, fair enough, but I pick a little bit of product into the slanty brush. Okay. And mostly I concentrate on the outer edge. Flicky light movements. Exactly. See, so yours are yeah. nice and in the center. You probably need just a tiny bit exactly on the there. Yeah, I have a scar here, which... So, uh, know that but you see so you fill in yeah. just, I have a bit where it's a little bit thinner there so I just kind of when on this side it's, it's just thinner exactly so that you flick it all in the direction that the hair is growing it's nice and firm yeah it's nice this brush it's nice and firm but if you were going to do a liner with it you can do it it's soft enough to do that too and how do you clean these brushes I wash them the way I normally wash all my other brushes with a little bit of, you know, I use a beauty blender, liquid cleanser, or a, um, they have a solid foam one, or a little bit of washing up liquid diluted, a little bit of Johnson's baby shampoo, anything. You just wash it the same way. Be careful that you don't get too much water in the... Inside. Just, just wash, rinse, rinse, all aiming down, you know, wash, 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 wash. Then I just kind of um, dry it with a kitchen towel or the tissue or something and then lay flat. How often should you clean a brush like this? Well, when I work on somebody professionally after every use, for me, if I'm only using that, because I've obviously got a few of these brushes. Yeah, of course. I, I have one for a liner, one for the brow, so then maybe once a week. Okay. But if it gets cloggy or thingy, as quick as I can, especially the ones if I'm going to use that brush for doing concealer, anything that does yeah. concealer, things like that, I wash more often because you don't want dead skins going on there, grease going in there. You've cleaned your face all beautifully and then I'm going to use a dirty brush to do yeah, that. Yeah, of course. That is um, nice. Would you recommend going darker or lighter for your brows, for instance? So my hair is brown. Uh, I mean, obviously I have highlights, but um, my hair is generally a very dark brown. But my eyebrows are, I think they're oh. black. Yeah. So um, when you when you do the, like, should I, I, I used a brown. Um, In the daytime now. or when there's natural light, I like, you know, just not to go darker just okay. to match it to your normal color and then at night or if you're going to be wearing more makeup so it's about the ambient light you know when the light changes when it's more dramatic at night or it's a little bit more subdued and you're putting a bit more effort you might do a little bit more then i think you can mm -hmm. strengthen your brow so this thing if people think of a brow just one way like you wouldn't wear one sweater or one dress or interesting dress. Would you? I, I know, but I never thought of it like that. I, no, I, mean, I, I think if you think of your makeup like that, it would be you don't do the same thing every single day of your life. Things change, something. But I do, I do, because I, you know, it's really hard to learn how to use makeup properly. No, but once you've got the basics all right, or you've just got the way of thinking to say, oh my God, just like you customize your skincare where suddenly maybe you've been drinking a bit more maybe you haven't been sleeping so much maybe you haven't been as thorough with your cleansing you need to put something in to give you like a, a boost same thing with makeup if you do the same thing you'll always look the same way and then you get stuck in a rut whereas if you're able to sometimes think tonight you know we are going out to dinner i'm going to strengthen those brows so you can pick, it doesn't have to be a brow product, it could just be a matte little 
dark eyeshadow that's a little bit black and you you do, like a, if i show you let me let me find my palette but right, i think it's really important the eyebrows that. really frame the face they so are. i find that like people don't give it enough love just, <laughs> very very lightly but now i'm really gonna strengthen it up so pretend hmm No. And what do you think about like microblading and like the tattoos? You know what? I I I know a lovely woman called Sue Man, and I I think Sue Man does a superb job. So it it really depends on the practitioner. I I don't I don't say no to anything. Whether you're going to have fillers or you're going to have this or you're going to have that, go and have them done. But do your research. Go to the best. I, I agree. I couldn't but agree I more. Just go to anybody. If I ever like, look, there are. Can you see how? I've yeah, been? it's just. Uh, and that's too harsh for me every day. But there are times when I want to kick in that, and I want to bore. Oh, you know, I want that. I don't think it looks harsh. It's very. Um, it's very defining. But I've just flicked it in, but it's completely different to that one. It you is. I, it's just to show people that you have an option. It's, it's a bit of fun and it's a bit of versatility. Like you change, I wear these earrings every single day, but every so often you take that out, you want to put something on that's a plain blouse that gives it a kick. That's, that, that's the only way to look at it, so that you're not obliged to do it every day. Then you're like, oh my God, it's eating into my time. Oh, I got it wrong. You know, just, just, it's a tool. It's a handy tool. And practice while you've got the time now. You know, now is the time. We've got these few minutes and hours in our hands. And a clean brush, just so you can manipulate it and see how you can tilt it this way, tilt it that way with no product. Then put a little bit of product and practice. And then you'll think, oh, I think the practice is important. <laughs> it's the practice. That's that. <laughs> the most important key and and then when you actually we come out of lockdown you'll be so well versed at doing it it'll become easy it'll become easy well my daughter will my daughter's nine but my daughter I love loves her. makeup I love her. and she was like I, I had to take her away from these little bits because i was like please don't use these these are for mommy for right now you can use them in a couple of days time but please don't mess them up before but every morning before her school starts she literally has like full face of makeup and actually I have to say she almost looks better in some of the things that I do even though she's only nine like she put my I, I, I had lipstick on that's another thing I'd love to be able to do bold lipstick because I love it on other people but normally I wear either very neutral or non noticeable and uh, she, I, she was putting on my lipstick. She's like, Mommy, you never wear this. And I put it on, and I looked hideous. And she said, oh, because, Mommy, we don't have the same skin color. It looks better on my skin color. And I was like, <laughs> you're right. Oh, no, I can't argue with that. No, look, I, when I'm working, I don't have anything. If I'm going on a shoot, nothing. I don't have, I just put my skincare, some protection, and I'm out that door because it's not about me. And when I do myself naturally, I usually have a whole selection of nudes and things. And now when we're on camera, and I've been saying it for all the Zoom and conference calling, it's important for people to have a tiny, because with a nude, we look I, washed I out. I look washed out. You look washed out and dead. So I'm saying to everybody, at the moment, park your nudes, because you know it works. To the naked eye, it looks great. If you do a very big eye and you put a nudie lip, it looks amazing. Now we need a hint, a hint. So I'm, I'm doing a, a nude, but with a pop of color. I see? really like this color. It's, it, it's a, a whole range from Clinique, and they're great because they're nice, and they, they call them their nudes or something. I, I'm sorry, Clinique, if I'm getting it wrong, but they do a whole selection. So the best way is to just kind of look at the set, shade things, and I'm putting it straight on from the bullet. I didn't bring any lipstick with me. Can I ask you, you know, the problem is, is that I always find that, um, for instance, like nude colors, um, I always go for the more brownie colors because I think they look better on me. And I guess you have to feel comfortable in whatever yeah. color you're using. Totally, totally. But I never get out of my comfort zone. It's kind of like I once had somebody come and a friend uh, come and look in my closet and help me get rid of stuff. And she was like, why do you keep buying the same thing over? And I feel like I do the same thing with makeup. Like, you, you know, like... Not 
this Tom Ford, I've actually probably been using for 25 years. I mean, like, I, I, it was Clinique before, you know, like it was Clinique before when he had his line or was it with Estee Lauder? I don't remember. He had a, he had a range with them. I used to buy from them when, the, when he started his own range, I started buying from him and I never changed. I mean, I've never gone anywhere else. He has some amazing texture. So when lockdown is over, I would like to come because you, you're so lucky. You've got such lovely full lips. So we could, you know your nudes and your brownie beiges. You're, you're sorted. So then I'd like to take you to the next level. And to be honest, the best way when you're first gauging something is, is by putting it on yourself. Is it, is I do that. I do it to buy. So I have tons of reds, for instance. And But when I put them on, I feel like when I put them on at home, they almost look orangey and I don't like orange tone on my skin so I feel like it has to actually not be too blue a red you know there's yes. different range but just a true red like a, just a true red it, a classic it's, red which has the, enough of a blue red and an orange red so then that that's it cancels that, it that's what you need and then maybe not too shiny just a little bit you could just smear it on and then just brush it off a few times to to really feel comfortable to get you're never how do you brush off lipstick I get a tissue. Oh, uh, okay, okay. And you blot it. It has, when you scrape, pull the edge of it, it'll have three layers. I'm trying to, without my glasses. <laughs> when you split it, see, look, I'm splitting it. Yes. It has three layers. There's two more layers there. So when you just take that and just literally. Ah. Uh. Move whatever red you see. Look, there's a there's a little bit of a stain even on that. So if you keep doing that to your red until you're comfortable with it, and then try and go out and see. And it, then the other thing that happens to me whenever I have uh, colored lipstick is I think I eat it or something. It goes away in like three seconds. So I always feel like. You know, I, I don't know if I lick my lips a lot. I'm not sure what I'm doing. Or maybe I haven't said it. I mean, I don't know if I should be setting. I mean, how do you keep lipstick on, basically? Do you, do you put enough on there to... Maybe not. <laughs> but I, I generally do. Like, I, I mean, I feel like I go like... You just want to do it quickly. So I think you almost have to do it. It's like a deliberate... You know, you have to... That day, decide. You're obviously very disciplined. You, you do things thoroughly from beginning to end. So I think one day you've just got to say, today I'm going to bite the bullet. I'm going to do it. Do it at night because I think it's easier because there yeah. is that little bit of, you know, don't do it in the daytime. Do it at night. Do it when you're going out with friends you know or with your husband or whatever, like comfortable people as well. So yeah. nobody is going to look at you and go, oh my God. What, what happened to you? <laughs> yeah. so, you know, Don't what? worry, my husband would say that before. You do I everything out. normally and then you're going to sit there and not in a rush. You're going to take five or ten minutes and say, I'm going to apply this red lipstick nicely. It, then you can blot it off a few times and give yourself a minute or two because some people, you know, because our the color and the heat in our natural lips changes, alters by oxidization the, the color, the shade. So maybe that's been happening to you too. So you need to look at it and think, okay, this hasn't changed now, I like it. Blot it, blot it, blot it, but make sure it's on uniformly. And, and do you do here? I, I kind of make my, you know, because so, so then when I'm using, I use this. And what is the name of this color? Someone asked for the name of your lipstick color right now. Uh, this one, okay, it's a Clinique. Um, it's called Embrace Me. Nice name. Embrace Me. And it's, they have a whole selection. So I, I like that because it's like my nude, but with a hint of. Yeah, it's very pretty. Uh, so that I don't look washed out and dead. And I just feel, use a brush or use your finger, if you're doing that red, to take it and... Mm. Ah. Uh, so you do go here. That's the other I, thing. I like to do it because then I sort of pull faces. I go... Mm, yeah. yeah, exactly. Ah. Because you're going to talk. You can't be like a model. Yeah. It's just going to sit there like that. It, you know, you're going to move and talk and dynamic. eat, drink and sip. So I do all those motions. Then you're going to say, you know what, Miriam? You look great. Just go out. And then Just do it. It looks good. 
and you will have the confidence and if you just pursue it and then then think what what did i i did it uniformly why did it slide off i think you're not putting it on enough evenly. it's like an even coat like when you paint the wall it's got to be evenly coated even if it's just a thin layer but everywhere yeah. not so it doesn't just come off the middle and stay on the edges and then it looks like a monkey's bottom you know like it's all tight and horrible oh i hate that so then do you recommend when you do the red lip to have the eyes more nude and natural i think it's it's easier look to be honest if you've got the confidence all on the eyes Go everywhere you know what some people it's all sounds wrong but they carry it off so there are things in life where having the confidence you can carry things off but to make life a bit easier for everyone else if i do a strong line i'm a bit less on the lips if i do that on my lips i do so my mother can do like a strong eye and a strong I, lip I, and I, it I, and it looks good I, on her but she has a look to her you know like i i my hair is i mean this is my hair i you know, like I, I don't have like big poofy hair and I'm not neither, wearing... Neither do I, and I'm actually losing my hair, so I'm starting a program. Started <laughs> oh, no. Therapy. So, because I want to stop that look, I kind of look and I think, oh, my God, I've got a Grand Canyon going on there. No, but, you don't. Oh, oh my God. Mine, <laughs> look at mine. Mine is like uh, a... And especially with the... Oh, my God, don't even go there. But you don't. They're worried about. So, I just think, make sure you do the technique and then speak to yourself like you would and say... That looks good. And if it's, there's something wrong, then that's the only time you take it off. Okay. But I think if you do the procedure, it's evenly done, it's the right sort of shade, and then go out and try and enjoy yourself and pare everything else down. Brows are nice, bit of mascara, very nice skin, off you go. So you were talking about the Zoom face. So what I do on Zoom right now is I, I didn't put any eye makeup on, but I generally do eye makeup, and I've never done it into a phone before. So I'm going to try. <laughs> I'm going to try. It's hard, isn't it? Because I've got. And, mirror, so and what, what do you microphone. use on your eyes? Huh? What do you use on your eyes? So for me, like before we started, all I did was a hint of on my eyebrows, and I just did. I curled my lashes, and I did. Oh. A Curling lashes is the best. New I thing I never did before. Love that. And then the only thing I did, because I see that you're always so groomed, I took a very thin, um, it's a gel pencil oh. for hourglass. It's very, very thin. Thin. And I literally just lifted up and I tight lined. Oh, you go inside. So I don't know how bad this is, but this is all I do. I literally go inside of my eye and, and out. I and so. I do this. Oh my gosh, it looks super dark right now. But I do that and I do a little, again, I'm not used to doing this like on a phone. It's on the phone. You do it a bit more refined when nobody looks great. So you see, you, you're you doing exactly what I've done, but I've got such small eyes. I, I, I have you have huge eyes. And you have bigger eyes. So by doing that, it gave you a little bit of presence. And then... And then sometimes I take a brush. And just I would actually, I, what I would use, I'm going to use this even though I... Um, I already used it because it's my my eyebrow and my pencils are sometimes the same. I sometimes use like that that kind of brush, the harder one, just yeah. to make it like go. And that's sort of like that's sort of my my Zoom call. Put your eye out. It's it's genius. It's wonderful. So and I feel like I'm naked on this side. Well, I am naked. I have nothing on. But um, even for me, for I don't wear that much makeup. I feel like if I don't have something around my eyes, I feel like oh my god. No, you feel you feel not finished. Yeah, so I do. Very, very, very good to to do that. And what you what most people do is they don't actually look at the shape of their eyes. Like I'm trying to answer Jasmine there. She said, "How do you make your eyes? Yeah, with makeup." But most important thing is not to put too dark a color, but you need something close to the eye and more outer on the edge there a bit like what Miriam has done she's just lined the top of it and a little bit underneath and just winged it out so what I love is actually I love these Charlotte Tilbury um like I don't know what they are actually they're they're eye pencils but I don't know if they're eye sh they're soft and so I like them this is a purple color so um it's like a, it's not quite as dramatic as like the 
um, black, red, dark brown, but I mix them up a little bit, and sometimes I go over them. But I, I sometimes, like, in, if you put it just inside of your eye, it actually makes your eye look um, smaller. And I, I love how some people, when they... They, like, give it a little lift. Like, I feel like that, you see, like, that side I put a little bit of a wing on, and it almost looks better than this side. That's nice. But I love these pencils because it's the only time I've ever bought anything online, like, really makeup-wise. Because they, <laughs> they it, it, you know, because they're soft. So what I don't like is I love the idea of going on the inside, but sometimes those hard pencils, I have very sensitive eyes. They make me feel really sensitive when I put them on so um, and it's not gonna and then you're gonna get ready and then it's gonna shrink them a bit like I have small eyes but I I think it's because from the 70s that's what I wore a bright green liner bright, Did blue, you? bright purple in the eye and I had dark eyes and it kind of popped, popped. Up. like I would have probably put a little bit of this blue on my eye if I was on holiday I don't Beautiful. probably do them in here but I put a nice pop there and just make sure the rest is clean and it does work but I love what you've done to yourself and I think that's the other thing is everyone has an idea of what works for them and the way you learn that is by experimenting trying it and then think do you know what yes I should do it yes that's the trend but it doesn't Look the best. Okay. So you know, you, you said you wore blue eyeshadow and like makeup and stuff. So I always feel that if I put that on, I almost look ridiculous. Is it just because I'm not used to it or I'm not applying it well? It's probably a mixture of both. Is that we're not used, you're not used to it. And you probably have, because you're not used to it and you're not comfortable, you've just done it haphazardly. You've just done it quickly. If you actually sat down, I'd love to do that one day in the future when we are together. Yes, uh, yes. I'd love that. I'd love to do your red lip. I'd love to do your a different colored eye or put it in and say, and, but honestly, to take it on to say, no, I don't like that ruby. And you can say that all, but let's do it on you properly and show you that is it that it, really is the most unflattering on you or is it just because it is I'm not used to it you're just not used to it someone asked me yes this color is chameleon from uh, charlotte tilbury so it's meant it actually says it's for green eyes but i really like it and every time i use it people always ask me about it so it's the one that i use the most but i use all of them like in in that sense um <laughs> she, i don't think she has i don't think she has like the light blues i do have some of the darker blues but um could you know, I, Look at that. You've found a product and you've got a wardrobe in it. You've tried all yes. this. So yeah, I do. You could do that with your eyeshadows too. I bet. I bet. I have. I actually have a lot of eyeshadow. I just don't feel that, um, you know, uh, I have deep set eyes. And so, again, it's a very bright day and I'm sitting underneath, uh, you know, uh, 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 a light, skylight. But um, the problem is, is that I find... I was going to ask you also earlier about what you do with um, cover-up because I find that sometimes I don't use cover-up so much on my face, but I do use it on my upper eyelids because um, especially now I get, uh, you know, today it's not so bad, I guess, um, but uh, I get a lot of hay fever and it can give you dark circles around yeah. your eyes when you have like hay this, fever. That's probably yeah. what I'm doing on my eye there. It just means it darkens slightly. Brightens it slightly. And what you need is something not so heavy, but you do need to, it's, it's more of a, not really a concealer, it's a corrector. So mm. you can, you love your Charlotte Tilbury brand. They do something called Vanish which in in the light medium dark and you you can literally pat that on someone like trish mcavoy has something very light or even the um it has to be light because if you put it anything heavy on your eyes guys and you don't give yourself eye cream beforehand you can look like really dry and cakey and it almost makes things look worse so that's where the skincare is really important this is where like the original yves saint laurent touche claire that kind of texture very very light like i said the charlotte tilbury one like the one from um there's something called um uh oh my god uh, I think Becca has it. Becca, I'm trying to think of all these light things that are almost like a primer for the eye so that it slides and it's not too heavy. Too he or even you need to be light handed when you apply it as well. So the product is light handed. Yes, this is true. You have to be light handed how you apply it.
too. And th see, that's what I feel. I think sometimes it's too heavy. Um, I feel like you need something really for the eye because if you try to do that and you put something else on top and you have a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm in my mid forties. So, you know, I do have a little bit of extra skin and, you know, if I lift my brows, they go, it goes away. But if you have too much caked on, then like it just doesn't look. It exacerbates it. It draws attention. It, 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 it draws attention to the bad bits, not the nice so, bits. True. So there are products out there, but very, very light-handedly you do that because it makes that, I don't know, it just brightens the area. So you need to sort of look dispassionately and know yourself. I love the fact that you know, oh, this is what happens when I have allergy. This happens in the light. So look at yourself. Pay attention. Pay attention. Pay attention to yourself because it's like going to the doctor. You've got the appointment with the GP. You just go there and you sit down and you go... Right, go on then. Guess what's wrong with me? Yeah, that's never going to happen. <laughs> um, I'm not a psychic. The more info you give me, the, the better. better. And what, what do you like for mascara? I, I was just gifted um, this iconic one, and I'd never used any of their products before. Which but is I that? actually really... From Hourglass? Is that the Hourglass one? Uh, no, this one's iconic. It's called Triple Threat oh, Black Mascara. Okay, iconic... One. Okay, I've but never tried like, iconic before, but you um, want lashes, which looks like no, it. I don't actually. But this mascara really gives me great lashes, and I'm not even like I, I've never really thought. I, I kind of was the I, ethos like kind of all mascaras are created equal. So but look, you can see a difference. I mean, I just yeah. did like how many strokes, yeah. and you can see a big yeah. difference. So for me, I have again. I think mascaras because of the way your lashes are. I have in my kit lots of different ones from waterproof to, to something to curl, something to bend, something to do this. But me personally, I love the Benefit Big Bad Girl Bang because it seems to suit my lashes. So, then, so what's the difference between the different brushes? So like, I don't know if you can see this one. I can see, I can see. But like, you know how some are fat and some are thin? Like, what does that I mean? I like them too fat on me because I, because of my age now, I'm 58, Marianne, and I need that magnifying mirror because I used to tell off my mum, God rest her soul, when she used to have it and she'd have a splodge there and I couldn't. I didn't realize that as you do get older, you need to see, because she'd just do it, and she didn't notice she'd actually smeared the skin above the eye. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. And now I do it, so I have to really be careful with my magnified mirror and do it. So I like a brush that's not too big, not too big and round, because it goes all over the place. I like that big girl, big bad girl bang from benefit and i like another one from clinique it's called lash power and it's a smaller brush so i can control it and it's also tubular formula where i can just wash it off with warm water i, I think that's always the nicest i mean i know it's not great if you're looking if you're going swimming or something like that but i almost find the ones that are waterproof a little bit um i don't want to say too aggressive but like it's you never really know when it's off and you really have to make an effort to try and take it off. And I always think that if you're manipulating your eyes, even if you like put the you know eye uh, makeup remover, it's a little bit too aggressive for the skin around the eye. So I like to say use a proper eye makeup remover for that so that, you know, one of those bi face ones. Yes. To cotton wool and I literally hold it on there. Because sometimes I do have to use waterproof mascara if I'm, I snorkel a lot and I dive when I'm on holiday. So not that I wear makeup when I'm going under the sea like that. But if I'm doing a beauty and it's humid and it's that, so I need a bit of waterproof mascara, but I remove it for the model. And they go, what are you doing? And I said, look, you're, Better if you do it. you're aggressing this very delicate eye. Put it and hold it there for a minimum of 30 seconds and let the product break down this 30 seconds is a long time guys it doesn't sound like a lot but when you're actually sitting there with something on your eyes it, it is 15, by 15 seconds you're getting your you're, you're getting bored so it's yeah hard. at least you've held it for a good few seconds and not scrubbing and dubbing that area then you can wipe off wipe off wipe off wipe off and it will be fine so everyone again I always buy the latest new mascara, whatever. I try it because I need it in my kit, and then I need it for what's personally for me. I like those two, okay. and then I waterproof when you need it. Um, Someone asked about a blush for Zoom calls. My favorite blush is NARS. Um, it's called Orgasm. I like that one. Um, 
uh, mine but literally, my, my daughter just broke my mine. Kit, so. <laughs> every favorite, and I love that. I love that because it's it it's very subdued and it gives you a light bit of color. Now, that is one of my big things for the Zoom, where I think again, it's like that sort of nudie beigey nude lips that looks great to the naked eye on camera or in in these kind of calls that we're doing you look washed out again so i would almost put a tiny bit more than you normally would even if you look at yourself and think oh my god i've got too much on on zoom or yes this it won't be look look I'm, i mean i don't have anything on but i i will put more on so I've got now my Charlotte Tilbury, and it's the cheek to, it's a pillow talk, but the intense. Uh, so I've actually used it around, and just a bit can more. Can I see your brush? What kind of brush are you using This now? one, this one is an eco tool. Uh, so I use it for my Bobbi Brown cream blush as well, or I've, I've just used a whisk of it on here, so I kind of, Smile. Yeah, 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 very pretty. And I put a little bit more on the needed so that it has some presence because on camera it looks better. You don't look so washed out. No, you look great. I, I definitely, I need to, well, my, as I said, mine, she dropped it yesterday, my daughter, so it's a so The knockoff is superb, but it's, again, it's a good neutral one. You need a tiny bit. But I have, I think I have the Charlotte Tilbury one, too. Like I said, I'm, I, like, <laughs> once, once I got her uh, eye things that worked, I, I bought a lot of other stuff, too. Um, um, I wanted to ask you what your three, like, favorite products are. For me or for my kit? So for me, it would always be some sort of mascara because you never look alive and finished without it. A sort of a lip balmy product, something that it can have a hint of color or not, but I need the comfort there because I talk a lot and my mouth does get a bit dry and I like, I like the feel of that. And I would say a concealer because I can almost... I can do, I can make it look like an eyeshadow, just thinning it so that it takes away those shadows or give me a bit of depth. I can do the dark shadows, I can do my little bit of marks. A clean spoolie brush, just even if I don't do my brows, I can just do to groom them. So there's those three things, mascara, tiny bit on my lips, and tiny bit of a concealer that's strategically placed and what's your favorite foundation for dewy skin oh my god there are so many out there i would say prep your skin beforehand so that it's not super matte and then you'll get that dewy effect i have to say guys the tint and protect will give you a dewy effect too yeah. but um but for coverage i tell people in my office um like for the ones that have um a little bit of uh, rosacea or they have acne and they want a little stronger coverage um, what I say is to use a tiny bit of Vichy it's derma blend it comes in a lot of different colors enough. Enough. and it's you can get it at any like uh, pharmacy basically pharmacy, food, super drug, wherever it's very Amazon and, yes and I think that's a really nice one it's not so dewy but you can mix it with a little bit of your moisturizer to give it a little bit more um, dewiness to it and I yes. think that's a really nice one to use and it's also not bad for your skin so it, it you know I, I think sometimes when people want coverage they're trying to cover something up and sometimes that can you're kind of going through a vicious cycle but this is something that is made for problematic skin or you know an issue at hand so it's not going to exacerbate your condition so no, exactly exactly it's good for sensitive skin or thing but that's where and if you haven't got rosacea but you want to just cover those that's where strategically your concealer can come works in really well you know it could be one layer and another layer just where you need it well, I'm, uh, what's your favorite um, product that you've come out with? Like, what of your line, like, uh, what is your favorite? Am I going to add to this? I'm looking forward to adding to this. You'll have to watch this space, and maybe we can do this again in the future. I would I'm love. I'm never going to be a huge, big range like I did with Ruby and Millie years ago, because I just feel now we have so much out there there's so many great great products and so many great brands out there and luckily not bragging but i have 
done it. You know, I don't want to go back there. And I'm a lot older. My daughter's got married. She might have a child. I want to be a grandma the way my mum was supportive to me. And I just know that whatever I do, it'll be similar in vain to what we've already got out. It'll be edited. It'll be functional. It will look good. I love that. And you can use it as well as all these other products that are there from all my peers and colleagues out there. It's never like, just use Ruby Hammer and nothing else on the planet. It doesn't work.